Hello students, hope all of you are doing good. I am Dr. Seema Singh and you are watching my channel Bonding with Chemistry. In my previous two videos on this chapter, we learned what are metals and non-metals as well as the various physical properties of metals. In today's video, we will understand why do metals show these physical properties. For this, we need to know what is metallic bonding. Please note that this topic is not a part of your current NCRT or CBSE syllabus and is only for enhancing your knowledge by providing a better understanding of physical properties of metals. In my next video, I'll take up the various physical properties of non-metals. So for receiving latest updates and notifications from my channel, kindly subscribe to it and hit the bell icon. Let us begin by quickly recalling the various physical properties of metals which can be explained by metallic bonding. Metals are lustrous, that means they have shining surface. They are malleable, which means they can be beaten into thin sheets. They are ductile, they can be drawn or stretched into wires. They have high melting and boiling points and are good conductors of both heat and electricity. For details, you can always refer to my previous video whose link is provided on the top as well as in the description box below. To understand metallic bonding, we need to know few terms which I am sure you have learnt in class 9. To help you recall, I will briefly explain them to you. This will help you in understanding metallic bonding easily. First of all, let us recall the basic structure of an atom. An atom consists of three subatomic particles, namely protons, electrons and neutrons. The nucleus or the center of the atom contains protons which are positively charged plus neutrons which carry no charge or are neutral in nature. Thus, nucleus is positively charged. Surrounding the nucleus are the electron shells which contain fixed number of negatively charged electrons. The outermost shell of the atom, you can see the one drawn in red, is known as valence shell and the electrons present in it are known as valence electrons. Students remember that the number of protons is equal to number of electrons and therefore atom as a whole is neutral in nature, it carries no charge. The next thing you need to know is what is a chemical bond. A bond means an interaction or force or attraction that holds two or more chemical species like atoms, ions or molecules together. For example, you can have a bond between two atoms. I can show bonds like this. Or between two ions. This is a cation and this is an anion. You can have interaction between these two. Or between two molecules. This is one water molecule. This is second water molecules. You can have a bond between two water molecules. Now, there are different types of bonds depending on how they are formed. A bond can be formed by transfer of electrons, that is loss or gain of electrons. Such bonds are known as electrovalent bond or ionic bonds. These bonds are formed between a metal and a non-metal. For example, sodium chloride. You will study about it in my subsequent video on this chapter. A bond can also be formed by sharing of electrons. Such bonds are known as covalent bond. These bonds are formed between two non-metals. For example, carbon is a non-metal, hydrogen is a non-metal, CH4. More about it you will learn in chapter 4, carbon and its compounds. The next one is metallic bond, which is a bond formed between metal atoms. For example, in metals such as copper, gold, lead, silver, etc., the atoms are held together by metallic bond. To understand metallic bonding, let us also recall the conventional or traditional definition of metals. We tend to define metals on the basis of its physical or bulk properties. We say, a metal is a solid material which is typically hard, strong, lustrous, malleable, ductile, has good electrical and thermal conductivities. Defining metals in terms of electrons, we say a metal is an element that readily donates electrons to form positively charged ions. A metal donates 1 to 3 electron 
so as to attain a stable octet configuration. I am sure you must have read about valency, octet and duplet configuration in class 9. For instance, sodium metal with atomic number 11 has an electronic configuration of 281. That means in its K electron shell it has 2 electrons, in its L shell it has 8 electrons and in its M shell also known as valence shell it has 1 electron. Sodium can lose 1 electron to attain a stable octet configuration and form sodium cation. Now this sodium cation will have a configuration of 2, 8. Since sodium cation has 8 electron in its outermost shell, it has attained a stable octet configuration. Similarly, magnesium can lose 2 electrons, whereas aluminium can lose 3 electrons to form magnesium cation and aluminium cation bearing 2 positive and 3 positive charges respectively. After knowing all these basics, let us finally come to metallic bond. Metallic bonds can be explained with the help of a model known as electron C model. Now this model was proposed by Paul Drood and later developed by Hendrik Antoon Lorentz. To understand this model and metallic bond, let us consider a block of metal, say copper. If we look at this block at microscopic level, that means where we can see atom and its components, we see that it contains plenty of copper atoms. All these spheres shown in red, they are copper atoms. These copper atoms are arranged in a systematic or orderly manner to give rise to a three-dimensional crystal structure. The smallest unit that makes up this structure is known as a unit cell. You can see that this cube here is the smallest unit which when repeated in different direction give rise to the entire structure. This structure is known as crystal lattice. And the smallest unit is known as unit cell. Dear students, I will not be going into further details of unit cell and crystal lattice because you will be studying them as a separate chapter in chemistry as well as in physics in your higher classes. Let us now understand what are kernels and mobile electrons in electron C model. We just learned that a metal is an element that readily donates or loses its valence electrons. In metallic bonding, the valence electron of a metal are not bonded to a particular atom but are shared by several atoms. Let us understand what I just said diagrammatically. This is a block of copper containing several copper atoms. Here copper metal has a tendency to lose one or more valence electrons. These electrons, you can see here the one in blue, these electrons are free to move throughout the crystal lattice. Now this electron can go here, this can go here, they can move throughout the crystal lattice of this copper block. Since they are free to move, they are known as mobile electrons. We see that the position of these mobile electrons are not confined to a fixed place. Therefore, these electrons are also known as delocalized electrons. Now, localized means one whose position can be fixed at a particular place. You can locate where it is available. Delocalized means the position is not fixed. The positively charged ion formed after the valence electron is set free is known as the kernel. So you see here, these are the metal kernels. Dear students, remember, a kernel not only comprises the positively charged nucleus of an atom, but also all the inner shell electrons. So we can say, kernel is an atom without its valence electrons. Let us now understand why this model is known as electron C model. We just learned that each metal atom in metallic bonding has two components. One, the kernel whose position is fixed and the other, the freely moving valence electron which move like a wave and are therefore shared by other metal kernels too. Dear learners, note that these mobile electrons are always present in between the kernels and therefore shield them from repelling each other. Remember the rule, like charges repel and unlike charges attract. 
the attraction between metal ions that is kernels and delocalized electrons create a bond which is known as metallic bond. So to sum up the entire electron C model, we can say that in this model there are free delocalized valence electrons which instead of orbiting their respective metal atom form a sea of electrons and move freely throughout the space between the positively charged metal kernels. These electrons act as a glue binding the various metal atoms together and thus imparting a metal a definite structure. This model is known as electron C model because according to it a metal is composed of an assembly of positive ions immersed in a sea of electrons. Students, this electron C model might confuse you in thinking that a metal is made up of ions and not atoms. Well, remember a metal is made up of atoms and not ions. Although in this figure each kernel represents an atom without its outer electron but that outer electron has not been lost. It may no longer be attached to a particular atom. It's moving like a wave. So it may no longer be attached to a particular atom but it is still present inside the crystal lattice. It is still there in the structure. Therefore, we represent an atom in a metallic bond as M and not M positive. For example, sodium metal is represented as Na and not Na positive. The second point is, do metal lattices or crystals contain fixed number of atoms? The answer is no. Metallic lattices do not contain fixed number of atoms. There are several thousands of atoms with no fixed value. Therefore, the chemical formula used for a metal is simply the symbol for the element. For example, copper metal is represented as Cu, even though a piece of copper contains plenty of copper atoms. Let us now learn how electron C model explains the various physical properties of a metal. The first being metals have high melting and boiling points. This is because the atoms in the metal are held together by strong metallic bonding which results due to strong forces of attraction between the positively charged kernels and the delocalized electrons. You can see here the bonding. The kernels will have bonding with the negatively charged valence electron which are mobile electrons. To overcome this force, a lot of energy is required and hence metal generally have high melting and boiling points. Metals such as gallium. If you remember my last video, I've told you gallium has low melting point. It can melt even in the person's palm. Now this gallium, which can melt in a person's palm, boils only at 2400 degrees Celsius. So from gallium molten to gallium gas or vapor form, you need to supply a temperature of 2400 degrees Celsius. This illustrates that the strength of the metallic bond is retained even in the molten form of the metal. Moving to the next property, metals are good conductors of electricity. That is, they allow current to pass through them. In a metal, electrons are free to move in any direction. That is, there is a random movement but no net movement of electrons. By net movement, I mean in a particular direction. On applying electric field or a potential difference, for instance, by connecting a metal strip to a battery, these electrons get aligned in one direction and start flowing from negative to positive terminal. This flow of electrons make them good conductors of electricity. The same mobile electrons are responsible for making metals good conductors of heat also. The thermal conductivity of a material is its ability to conduct or transfer heat. When one end of a metal is heated, the electrons in that particular area start vibrating faster. Their kinetic energy increases because kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature. The electrons start moving faster and collide with each other. During these collisions, they transfer their energy to other electrons. Thus, the heat is transferred from one end to the other end. And so, metals are generally good conductors of heat. Remember, the delocalized electrons can transfer the energy at a faster rate 
as compared to substances with localized electrons because these electrons are free to move. So they'll be moving faster when energy is supplied in the form of heat and thus conduct heat faster. Coming to malleability. Malleability as you all have learned is the ability of a metal to be beaten into thin sheet without breaking or fracturing. When force is applied on a metal piece, for instance, a metal piece is hammered, then metallic bond results in the deformation of the crystal lattice, that is, the shape of the metal changes, but at the same time, the crystal doesn't break or fracture. This is because of mobile electrons. The different layers of metal atoms can slide over each other as the positioning of electrons is not fixed and thus a metal can be molded into various shapes. The metal will get fractured if the positive charges come very close to each other, which results in the repulsion and breaking of the metal. But this is avoided because of the mobile sea of electrons that are always present in between the kernels and thus shield them from repelling and breaking. For the same reason, metals are highly ductile, that is, they can be drawn or stretched into wires. Suppose we have to make a wire from a metal rod or a thick piece of metal. For this, the rod is passed through wire drawing dies. You can see here, there are three wire drawing dies here. These dies reduce the diameter of the block. By repeating the process through different dies of different diameters as shown in this figure, the wire of desired thickness can be obtained. The block's diameter gets reduced without breaking it. This is because the various layers of metal atoms can slide over each other as well as get compressed due to fluid-like sea of electrons. These mobile electrons not only act as a shield preventing the metal kernels from coming too close but also let the metal be reduced in diameter and thus being drawn into wires. As you can see in this figure, the metal block goes inside the die and gets compressed due to fluid-like sea of mobile electrons and finally gets drawn into wire of desired thickness. Coming to the explanation of the last property, metals are lustrous, that is, they have a shining surface. The delocalized or mobile electrons readily absorb and re-emit visible frequency of photons. You will be studying more about photons in your higher classes in both physics and chemistry. Right now, you simply need to understand that mobile electrons absorb light and re-emits light. This re-emission or bouncing off or reflection of light is responsible for metallic luster. Dear students, remember that the color of the metal is decided by the wavelength of the reflected light. Finally, let us quickly summarize what we have learned in this video. Metallic bonding is the strong electrostatic force of attraction between the metal ions, which are also known as kernels, and the delocalized electrons, which are also called as mobile electrons. Now, these mobile electrons are responsible for imparting metals their various characteristic physical properties such as malleability, ductility, luster, high melting and boiling point, as well as good conductivity. With this, I come to the end of this video. If you like my video, do please spare a moment and give it a thumbs up. In my next video, I'll take up physical properties of non-metals. So stay tuned to my channel, please subscribe to it and share this video with anyone who you feel might benefit. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care and stay bonded my dear learners.